right, hey folks, welcome to another episode of Random Questions. We're here in a loud, beefy, uh, crowded LAPC ballroom uh, here at the Commerce Casino. I'm here with none other than, whoa, it's Justin Bonomo. Uh, where did that sounder come from on your show? On Poker Road, we've got the, uh, the all strategy. Uh, my grandfather and great-grandfather, they started a candy company. It's called Bonomo Turkish Taffy. So it's from wow. uh, one of their commercials back in like the 60s. And somebody found this and got it on there, did you bring yeah, that you forward? Yeah, you can YouTube it. Just YouTube uh, Bonimo Turkish Taffy and a couple of videos will come up, the old commercials. Very nice. So, do, being that kind of guy, do you have a bit of a sweet tooth like, uh, growing up around Not candy? really, no. I'm always like the one that orders a second entree when everyone else is ordering dessert. That's a good way to go. I like my food hot. Very much, very much so. Now, it's been a hell of a, a festival of, of tournaments of different sizes and everything else. Have you been here for more than this, or did you just show up for the 10K, horse, heads up, and then the main event? Yeah, I showed up at like 3 a.m. before the horse, so I'm going to play the big three tournaments, the horse, the heads up, the main event, and then I'm going to stay through the invitational. I'm assuming the cash games will be good, so I'll play that all week. Yeah. Uh, one particular well-known cash player described it as, you know, this is the World Series of Cash. Uh, saying that LA, this is the biggest attraction of uh, cash games that you're going to see. Have you found, have you had a chance to hit them yet? Or yeah, I mean, I haven't played them this trip yet because uh, I've been at the tournament, but yeah, I've played here before. There's just so much money, so many rich gamblers that are just throwing it in there. A lot of action. Not bad at all. You think you can make your cash nut for the whole year during this one series? Yeah, if you run a little bit good, you certainly could. Not too bad. All right, have you ever been Rickrolled? Um, yes, I have. Not directly, but I've clicked on like the links on 2 plus 2 and stuff, and I've been, um, Bubba Rolled, is that the name of it? Bubba the, Rolled? Bubba Rolled, I don't know. The guy that goes woohoo, and there's like 800 different kinds of Rick Rolls these days. It's, it's I've, getting worse. I've seen all of them, sadly. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, we're going to kick you off with an old standard favorite, which is called Which is Worse in the Poker uh, World, and, and this is three standard questions. But the first one is bestiality or slow roll? Um, definitely bestiality. Okay, <laughs> um, all right. Do people actually say slow rolling? Yes, yes, wow. quite often. Uh, necrophilia right. or victory dances over suckouts? Uh, <laughs> Again, I'll go with the necrophilia. Okay, well, you know, it's, it's all right. It's okay. How about cock blocking your buddy or soft playing your buddy in a tournament? Soft playing your buddy in a tournament. Yeah, that works out. <laughs> you think the world is going to be a better or worse place in 100 years? Uh, much better, if we survive. If we survive. I think there's like a small chance that like stuff goes horribly wrong, but if it doesn't, I think we're going to be good. Ending variants of survival. Yeah, there's like that 2% chance we just all die, but as long as we get past that, we're in great shape. Yeah, we're young. <laughs> it's good EV, as long as you don't hit the one outer. Exactly. That's right. Tell me, what's the biggest disappointment you've had in your life? Um, probably my WPT finishes. I finished 7th, 8th, and 11th now with the out of single final six for the TV final table. Wow. Had a lot of bubbles over the course of my career. Yeah. Well, you're no Joe Seabock, sir, but we'll take you on that. I also got a 16th too. I don't even add that to the resume anymore. It's, it's just too far off. Exactly. What's your What's your biggest accomplishment, poker or otherwise? Um, that's a tough one. I like I have a lot of close calls in tournaments, but like I don't have any big wins yet, which you know part of that disappointment, I guess. I got a second in a World Series event to Eric Lindgren, which was I think that was my biggest cash ever. So I guess that would have to be it. Good TV time too. Not too bad at all. Do you enjoy explosions? Um, poker explosions or not poker No, just in, in, in general. Yeah. Yes. Who doesn't? That's a good point. Who really pisses you off in this world? <sighs> a lot of people. Just scumbags and douchebags and people that just like... People that live in their own world and they don't like consider other people. Like, the, my best example of this is just drivers that are just oblivious to other drivers on the road. That kind of stuff really pisses me off. So where do you where do you live now? In Vegas. In Vegas. Okay. So I was gonna say I had some person tell me that and then say they lived in LA and I thought, well, that's just hell on earth every day going to work. Yeah. It's all through there. In a standard 52 card deck, which card are you? Um. Wow. King of Hearts came to mind instantly, but that's a suicidal king, so I want to take that back. Wow. Um. That's how you know. I didn't. Even, <laughs> you got through the answer and the metaphysiology, right? That's kind of scary that that's the first card that popped in my head. It is. Could be a therapist somewhere in your future. I don't know. 
it's, it's all right. But I think we... I just thought that was a cool card as a kid or something. Because, you know, when you're seven years old and you realize this, the king has, like, a knife through his head, it's kind of cool. That is. That's pretty awesome. What is the fine line between professional gambler and sick degenerate? Um, oh, there's so much overlap. There's not really a fine line. Um, a lot of people are both, for sure. A lot of people. In the world of poker, pretty strange characters here, there, and everywhere. Who's the most normal one you know? Ugh. The most normal poker player? They don't exist. I have good. no idea. I can't. I'm thinking of like 800 poker players, and not a single one is normal. That's fair enough. If you could put any three cars in your garage to build a dream garage, what would they be? Any three cars? Any three cars. Um, wow. I honestly don't know that much about cars. Okay. Motorcycles. Um, I know motors. like the McLaren F1 is supposed to be awesome. Um, some type of hybrid. Um, oh, maybe a Bentley. Yeah. Beats me. Well, in current events, pop culture current events, A-Rod uses steroids. Does this attach in any way to cheating scandals in online poker? Yeah, I mean, it's... I've heard a lot of people say that everyone uses steroids in baseball and it's just a matter of who gets caught. I, I have no idea whether or not that's true. But if it is, it sounds like a lot of the ghosting scenarios. Like, the sites are very vague about the ghosting rules, and they, they just need to make it more clear and just start enforcing it so that... You know, there's no gray area right. when it comes down to it. What recommendations would you give the poker community to block up possibilities of online cheating solution things like that? Um, my impression has always been that ghosting is allowed as long as you're like you're just talking to the person, giving them advice. Like, there's no one person to a hand rule online. Unless, of course, you're at the same table. But like, I think if you log into the account or you're the one clicking the mouse for them, then all of a sudden it becomes illegal. And if that's the case, it should just be written clearly. I mean, it's kind of hard to come up with rules that are easy to enforce, but just having something there that's it's clear what's okay and what isn't. So there's no the technical piece of advice you could see fitting in there or anything, you know, like software patching or anything. Oh, like oh, that. I mean, in terms of like in terms of catching wise. people, I, I honestly, I could be wrong about this, but I think sites are actually a lot more capable of catching people than they let us on to believe. Oh, okay. Like. I, Again, I don't know if this is true, but I think each computer has like a unique ID number, and if they can track that, it's just really easy to see who's logging into like someone else's account. Yeah. And you can tell what city someone's in. Unless... It should be pretty easy to tell which shenanigans are going on. That's fair enough. What member of your family drives you the most crazy? Um, I actually have a pretty sane family. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I have a cousin that's kind of annoying. Just asking me a lot of questions and stuff. That, like especially when I'm like playing lots of poker. Like I'll have like you know eight tables going on. I'll be getting these IMs like questions that. What did you do this morning? What did you have for breakfast? You know? <laughs> Why? So how many tables do you typically play at one time? Uh, lately, I've been playing like 99% of my plays on Bodog, and they cap you at four tables. So, really? pretty much been playing four tables. Yeah. A lot of it's been heads up, though. Um, I think since I'm a Bodog pro, a lot of the regulars think, "Oh, he's a tournament dunk, so I'll play him heads up in cash games." But they've been quitting me one by one, the regulars. So I guess that means I'm doing okay. All right. Is there a regular stream of action getting behind you there on Bodog? Um, there was at first. I um, whenever I sat games used to fill up quickly. Now it's the opposite. Now the regulars don't want to play against me because they realize I'm actually not terrible. It's not bad. I, I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or tell you I'm sorry that, you know... You're, it it works both ways. Really. Yeah. But, I mean, it's kind of nice because the fish will still play me. Well, it makes it easier to find them. Actually. Exactly. So, are you... What's more important to you? Sports, music, or art? Oh, music. Not even close. Music, I'm not even very close. passionate about music. Been to well over 100 concerts. Wow. Which, uh, which group have you seen the most? Um, live. Really? And, and I say that kind of like dejectedly because they used to be like when Throwing Copper came out, for those of you that, that don't know, they did the song Lightning Crashes, a couple other big hits. Like back in 94, they were awesome. And just each album that came out, they just got worse and worse. I agree. And, I have those albums. <laughs> and then they started getting old and they got married and had kids and they just they lost it. It went away. I, I've seen them, I think, 21 times in concerts. And the last four were just miserable. Like, I think they're added new chances from me. Yeah, work. Now, if you could eliminate one band from existence, just wipe its music and the people in it clear 
from this world, what would it be? It would have to be a pop group. Maybe like the Jonas Brothers or something. Britney Spears. I don't know. For some reason, I, I really don't like Jay-Z either. That's fair enough. <laughs> now, coming back the other way on that, if you could tell everybody about one band they probably don't know about and be the evangelist for that band, who would it be? Oh, there's so many. Um, you only get one. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to go with... <laughs> Can I go with a movie? Well, Glenn Hansard is the lead singer of The Frames, and he put out an awesome movie called Once with uh, this chick, Marquette Globa, who has an amazing voice. Right. And it's basically like the movie Once is them like selling their music, and it's just, it's like a very low budget film, just about two musicians, but you know, it's the soundtrack is the music they actually make. It's just a beautiful, beautiful movie. I highly recommend it to anyone. It takes, it takes you through them in the process of selling the music, so it's semi-autobiographical. Kind of. Even though it's very low budget, but the characters are very well done. They're very interesting characters, and you know you, you feel for them throughout the movie. It's a perfect date movie, too. If you want to bring your girlfriend to once or rent it on DVD, it's a perfect date movie. Worth picking up. Well, as we go out and we turn the corner here and we start heading into the summer in the World Series, we've got a whole new rack of things. They've done things like taking away rebuys. Now, the co-host with Daniel, who thought, you know, who's obviously a degenerate rebuyer, uh, and would probably had the most to gain by keeping it in, but was a big fan of getting rid of him entirely. Where do you stand uh, on that? Um, I don't buy the whole you could buy a bracelet argument because, except for the the Deuce to Seven 5K rebuy, like they get, you know, thousands of players. You can't even if you spend a hundred rebuys, you're still nowhere close to having a bracelet. At the same time, though. I, I've heard rumors that the main reason they got rid of them is because of cheating in the rebuys, and it's hard to keep track of the dealers. And that, you know, that makes a lot of sense with thousands of players. It's fair. And I, I guess if you just don't have the means to do it reliably, then whatever. I mean, personally, I enjoyed them and had fun because they were more deep stacked later on. But yeah. What are you What are you most looking forward to in the new setup? The 40k no limit for sure. I think it'll have a lot of players. Actually, it should be a really good. Event. Who do you pick as uh, five people to watch going into the 40k? Then you know we're going to be playing and may surprise the world. Um, I got to go with uh, my two buddies, Isaac Haxon and Scott Sieber. They live at um, Panorama Towers with me in Vegas, and I've just learned so much from these guys. Just incredibly brilliant guys, great players too. Um, I'm going to pick myself just for confidence factor. I don't know if that's a bad thing or whatever, but um, I think Antonio Esfandiari is really underrated as a deep stack player. Like, a lot of people see him on the WPT and, like, oh, he's a tournament donkey or whatever. But he's actually really good at deep stack cash games. So, that's, four, that's four. Four, yeah. Uh, i got to come up with a fifth. Um, I'm going to pick someone random. Wild card. Um, what celebrity is going to be playing? Chuck Liddell. Yes, Chuck Liddell is my <laughs> fifth pick. There we go. We'll get him in there. Would you rather put a bad beat on Chuck Liddell or Howard Letter? Um, I don't think Chuck, I don't think Howard would kill me, but Chuck Liddell is capable of it, so I'm going to go with Howard on this one. Fair enough, fair enough. I'd be scared to give him a bad beat. Yeah, that, I might have to work that into the lightning round. You'll get to do that <laughs> at the end of the bit here. We'll see how that goes. If you're guaranteed the honest answer to three different questions, who would you ask? And what questions would they be? Oh, so they have to know the answer? No, they will give you the honest but answer like, to the best of their capacity. Can it be something like about Jesus, like, or... Sure. Okay, um... So who would you did, ask? Did he really exist? Was he really a prophet? I would ask that to just anyone that knows about Jesus. Um, I guess that's not really the point of the question. Um... No. O.J. Simpson, did you do it? Right. Um... George Bush, would you... <laughs> Do you think you're a greedy person, or do you think you're actually doing good for the country? These are fair questions. I like it. Would you rather play your best game against the top-notch player, or your worst game against an average player? Uh, um, it's really close. My worst game is actually... Like, a lot of people have, like, an F game. My worst game is closer to, like, a C, yeah. so... What is your worst game? to put yourself out there. Like oh, you mean like form of poker? Yeah, or? yeah, no, well, yeah, yeah. You know. Or like tilt factor or like form of poker? I was saying form of poker, but oh. if you meant in shape, yeah, that's cool too. Oh, my worst game's PLO then. All right. I just I've never bothered to put hands in, never bothered to learn it. It's kind of what's going nuts now. Are you finding a lot of pressure to get over and uh, play some PLO? Uh, 
it will now. Of, but like, <laughs> it's getting to the point where it's not as free money as it used to be. It's still easy because people don't really know what they're doing, but I don't know. I, I think I have so many other forms of poker that I'm playing now that I don't really want to dilute my time and spend it on PLO yet. Are you in favor of getting back to the serious idea of the full multi-format that incorporates PLO and no limit hold them into the seven game gigantic? Oh, I mean, obviously, you know, PLO is my weakest game, so I'd pick any other game over that. But, you know, as far as being a good decision goes, I think it's great. You know, I, I missed the, the 10K8 game event last year, and I was really pissed about that. But I was I was um, either in the money or at a final table of another event, so obviously I had a good excuse. Yeah, that'll, that'll get through there. Yeah. Are you a T guy or an A guy? Um, T? Sure. Oh. You're the first person to give me that answer. That's okay. You, you said it first, so I don't know. It seemed, like, seemed like a letter that fit with me. You do know what I'm talking about. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh I actually am a tea guy. There you go. And you are the first third person out of probably a dozen poker players I've interviewed to say that. I don't know what it was, but there it is. Well, you... I'm retarded. No, 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 no. It's, it's a that. funny story for off-camera because we'd end up sitting here talking about it, but it is a funny story. I'll tell you that. Do you read comics? I used to as a kid, but haven't in over 10 years. Who was your favorite character? Um, I really like the X-Men. Uh, I guess Wolverine would have to be the coolest one of them. That's pretty awesome. If you could have a superpower, which one would it be? Everyone says flying, so I'm not going to say flying. Uh, some kind of like mind control, telekinesis or something like that. Works See out. my opponent's whole cards. Make them fold when I want them to. Yeah, that would all right, we're going to kick off to one more little thing here, and this is called the lightning round. This is how I finish these up. What this is, is first you have to pick the game you're going to play, and then I'm going to give you the choice of two people. Out of those two people, you would choose which one to play heads up for rolls. Just put right a lot of time into this. I, I try. This i got a whole book of this, so we're, uh, we're ready to go on top of that. So what game would you play in the random person heads up I guess no one will hold them. I've been playing that a lot. Heads you up can recently. pick Stratego, whatever else. Oh, too. oh but wow. I mean, you, know, oh. It's a, you get to pick oh. whatever whatever contest you and, want. And you've got the list of players preset already? I, I have the list of well, uh, players and others. Oh, well. I've got this locked up. Magic. Yeah. Magic, Magic the Gathering. Gathering. No one knows how to play. I'm just locked to win against anyone that's never played before. Nice. Well, I was, I was, I've talked to a few of them here, so do we go with Gary Wise or David Williams? Um, I would rather play Gary Wise as up. Oh. Dave Williams still plays a lot. Gary's kind of quit. That's a good point. That's a good point. So just on an offside there, now that you're in Vegas and a lot of the ex-Magic uh, road folks are there, do any high-stakes high Magic games ever break out? Or um, mostly, I mean, it's the same group of guys. We're, you know, best friends playing against each other. So usually we just play for a meaningless amount of money, like $100 or something. But uh, when Noah Boken comes in and sometimes Bryn Kenny, they really kick up the stakes. They kick up the action. <laughs> So we have, we have the hidden dark world of the Magic Together and Underground Station Circuit. They have um, these conference room at Pan Panorama Towers, which is, you know, four tables, 40 chairs, whatever. You can rent it out for whatever you want. Of course, we rent it out to play Magic for, you know, 10 hours straight. All right. It's a lot of fun. What's your best deck? My best deck? I mean, we, we always play Limited, which is where you, like, draft it fantasy baseball style. So. Oh, okay. I don't think I've ever played one. That's there you go. Yeah. All right. Next one's coming up here. Heads up, and going on here. Are we going to go with Donald Trump or Bill Gates? Um, Donald Trump, he's kind of crazy. Bill Gates is just too smart. Not that Donald Trump is. Right. Now, we had him on the same table back here in the 10K horse, and the world wondered if it was going to tear fabric in time, but Lane Fleck or Mike the Mouth Madison? Oh, wow. Lane, he's just getting drunk and spew for sure. That's <laughs> not too bad. Oompa Loompas or Munchkins? What's the diff What's a munchkin from? A munchkin is from the Wizard of Oz. Uh, Oompa Loompas Charlie are from and Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Factory. I'm a big Charlie and Chocolate Factory fan, so I'll go with Oompa Loompas. That works out. Obama or McCain? Oh, McCain. I mean, Obama's brilliant. McCain, no comment. <laughs> out there. Indiana Jones or Han Solo? Uh, oh, definitely Indiana Jones. No Jedi mind tricks or anything. <laughs> Bill Murray or Dan Aykroyd? Oh, I love Bill Murray. I play against him just for a chance to talk to him. He's my favorite comedian. A big fan. Dalai Lama or Charles Manson? Um, I don't want to get killed, so I'm going to go with the Dalai Lama. That's fair enough. Carlos Mencia or George Lopez? Uh, I don't like 
like either of them, to be honest. I think their comedy's kind of bland. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with George Lopez because he's somewhat quieter, but not much. Mm-hmm. We'll go back and we'll go back in time a little bit. John Candy or Chevy Chase? Um, I guess I'd go with Chevy. I like them both a lot. Dennis Leary or George Carlin? Oh, George Carlin. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Pope or his hat? Um, a lot of George Carlin reference for fun. Oh, I did not get that one. Oh, okay. I'll pick the hat. I don't the know hat, what it means. But the hat has magical powers. You lose. Oh, that, damn. Was the, that was the one inside the one. I'm afraid you didn't make it that. And the last one, I want you to name the four toughest people out there that you wouldn't want to play up against, and then pick the one that you'd have to play. Um, still in Magic? Are you? Um, yeah. Okay, um, Alex Melnikow, he's a poker player that lives with us. He just it destroys us. Uh, my friend Gabriel Masif, also a poker player, doesn't live with us. Um, there's so many Jap- The Japanese have just like taken over the game, so my last two are just going to be nameless Japanese people. Okay, that's fair enough. And you have to play and, one heads up for your entire bankroll. Um, I guess I'd go for Gabriel, because he'd be an awesome guy to lose my bankroll to. You know, go to a nice guy at least. Yeah, that's fair enough. Justin Bonomo, you have survived the lightning round. You've survived random questions. Thanks for sitting down with us. Everybody, you can catch Justin on All Strategy, and you can also play with him on Bodog Life. All right, folks.